here in 1801 and had Charles Bullfinch design this house for them as well. We really try to give people an understanding of how the neighborhood came to be what it is today and, and how people preserve it as well. So it's what gives Beacon Hill its unique character. In 1910, William Sumner Appleton founded Historic New England, which was then called the Society for the Preservation of New England Antiquities. He had spent the previous few years actually getting involved with preserving some historic sites in the Boston area and it came to his attention that there really wasn't an organization that was truly committing itself to doing that. And Appleton and his colleagues who were the founders really felt that there was value in saving the places that they remembered. So he formed with 18 colleagues, SPNEA, now Historic New England. And when you look back and realize that he was the country's first professional preservationist, and you look today, a century later, at what historic New England is, it's really a fascinating story. Today, historic New England is best known as the owner of large numbers of old houses that are preserved as museums in some cases or preserved by, by legal protections and held in private ownership. Out of our 36 historic house museums, they reside in 26 different communities and none of those communities are the same. So we do offer a very wide uh, program slate from car shows to lawn concerts to behind the scenes house tours to a working farm that hosts a CSA, a community supported agriculture. What Historic New England does that's really powerful for preservation in the United States is it makes the properties that it, it owns relevant to today's communities. So it brings people to this site which might not have ever come before. Well, the Watson Farm is a 265-acre farm. When we came here in 1980, we were given the mission of working this farm in a sustainable manner and balance that with developing public access and public programs. So we're open for the public to come in and hike around and enjoy the property. I think that they had a lot of foresight to take uh, farming into a part of their preservation ethic. One of the great things about collecting historic homes is that nearly everyone has the experience of home. So an entry point into history um, that's very comfortable is looking at a house. Every time a visitor comes to a historic New England house museum, the first question they get is, why are you here? What brings you here? And what can we do to make this tour exactly the kind of experience that you want? We can tell a real range of stories of New England history through our historic sites, starting from the 17th century all the way up to the 20th century at the Walter Gropius House. People hadn't yet begun to think that houses of the modern period were even worth preserving at all. They were so familiar. One can go to a number of museums I and mean, you see a wonderful object in a vitrine or a case, and it's really in isolation. You do have a label that explains it, but it's not the same as when you see it in a context. It's hard to imagine there are one million objects in the library and archives. We have architectural drawings, we have ephemera, we have books, we have a wide range of photographs access through our collections database and people can discover really a wealth of information. Since we have over 50,000 objects in storage, uh, we want to, whenever possible, get these into the, uh, the public consciousness. I think it's a great exhibit because, you know, so many family memories and experiences revolve around the kitchen. You know, I have a lifelong interest in old houses and so it's been an important part of my education. Buildings have come down to us in a condition that um, is significant in itself. They need to be kept up and painted, but they need to show the aspects of their history that they have experienced. You don't accomplish that by skinning off the old clapboards and putting up new wood and a fresh coat of paint. Um, the history disappears when you do that. My name is Bruce Blanchard. I'm the carpentry foreman for Historic New England taking care of 36 properties that we um, maintain throughout New England. And in this case, it's the uh, columns to the portico of the Langdon House. And I think we're paying tribute to the character of the craftsman that came before us. 
it's the whole idea of preservation of the past for future generations and we're dealing with future generations. We start with preschool programs here and of course you, you introduce whatever you can introduce that they will understand. So here we do, we do the archaeology because that was part of the house's history to completely dig the site and find out its secrets. I found another piece of the pottery. Oh, super! It's always with the idea of put something in their hands and let them, let them discover it for themselves. All the while you're kind of whispering in their ears, this is the story, this is the story, and it goes in. It goes in. Here at the Otis House, our most popular program is called Classic Times, and the idea is to teach kids how to recognize neoclassical architecture. Find as many arches as you can. And so we find that once we teach kids how to recognize these things, they will leave this building and start pointing to things around them that are from classical architecture that they didn't notice three hours before they came. And that's been at the heart of all we've tried to do with education, is to get young people to understand that history is actually about them. As we've grown as an institution, we've grown in looking at the ways we're able to share these wonderful resources with a wide and growing audience. It's a perfect way to, to, to take history and kind of relive it almost, you know. And that's what Historic New England's doing with the houses today, is looking at each one individually and saying, what's the best use for this house that will add value in the communities that we serve? When Appleton founded Historic New England in 1910, there were 18 members, and from the very beginning, he was out there in the bulletin saying the cornerstone of a strong and growing organization is going to be a strong and growing and active membership, and we're continuing to grow. I am willing to do anything to support them, and of course by joining the CSA I get an automatic membership in Historic New England. When we're adding value in communities, people recognize that they have a role in making sure that these historic places are not only preserved, but are used, are interpreted, are valuable for the future. These stories are part of the continuous story of New England today. So everyone needs to feel that the houses that Historic New England collects are actually part of their story. <laughs>